Hey, how are you guys doing? So guys, we're going to go over um, some uh, things, and I'm staying along the theme. If you guys watched uh, the Watch and Pray um, video, we are going to stay on that theme, and we're going to talk about the treasury rooms, guys. So when we operate through Kingdom Principles, we can um, learn how to administrate as a king, as a priest of the Most High God. These, these are real things, guys. These aren't just, you know, symbolic, mystical things. There are real things you can do, which are actions, which will have corresponding reactions with the Kingdom of Heaven. We can operate with it. It's real, guys. So, um, but the first thing we have to understand is that it's not magic. It works off the same example of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave his life, he sacrificed. But he also told us about this day that we're living in, okay? And, you know, it's as in the days of Noah. Um, and they, they ate, drank, married wives. You're given in marriage till the day they entered in the ark and the flood came. It's an, as in the days of Lot. They ate, drank, bought, sold, planted, builded. The same day Lot went out of the world. It rained uh, fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them out. Even it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So guys, this is, the Lord is coming. He's coming soon. And he's giving us this example of just going uh, and forsaking all of him. Okay? In that day, he which shall be in the housetop and his stuff in his house, let him not come down and take it away. He does in the field. But likewise, let him not return. So the Lord is saying, guys, we must forsake all and follow him. Okay? And this is real. Remember Lot's wife. I mean, she left and then turned back. And what happened? Turned into a pillar of salt. So this example is going on right now. And so what we want to do is we want to be one of the ones that forsakes all. This is one of the keys of the kingdom. Whosoever shall seek his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, this is a real thing, guys. This is a real principle. When you really do this, uh, amazing things will happen, okay? Um, I've been living this way for years, okay? But now I'm stepping out in a new um, arena of faith. You can see that, you know, I have a, you know, a place I live. Well, I'm not going to be here by the end of the month. You know, I'm stepping out in faith. I'm going to uncharted territory, so you're interested and then I'll, I'll share but I tell you that in the night there shall be two in one bed one shall be taken and the other is left so these are two types of people one that is this like the excuse to the marriage supper of the lamb one said I just married a wife I can't come to the marriage supper well that's the bed so that's one that was left and another is taken what does that mean there's another type that is, is going after the Lord that forsakes all, okay? Uh, two shall be grinding together. One shall be taken and the other left. What is that? The oxen. The excuse was the oxen. Oh, I just bought oxen. I must try them. Well, these are the oxen grinding in the mill. So the example of the oxen is the type of person that, I don't care what I just bought. I'm going. I'm forsaking all for him. I'm living to serve his table first. Remember earlier it says, there's the parable of the man. He must set the Lord's table first before he eats. So that's what we must do, guys. Um, uh, two it shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two types in the field. The one type we saw just bought the field. And that and he couldn't come to the marriage supper. Oh, he just bought the field. He has to go, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just bought property. What did it say? Buying and selling. Okay? So... We must go. We must follow him. All right? And, and you must put yourself in the position of not being in control, of not having a plan, of not having it all figured out, not having your com comfort zone of, well, if it doesn't work out by the Lord, you know, I have this other thing, you know, I can do. And there's no plan B. There's, it's just him. And you step out in faith, and then these things um, happen for you, okay? But well, guys, this is real, and I'm going to show you the key of David. I'm going to show you how the treasure rooms work. I actually just did. I read it to you. But 
I want you to understand this stuff is real. Okay? Now, when we go to Revelation chapter 8, guys, um, those that have not followed the series called the House of David, this is new, but um, I'll just summarize real quick, guys. The Lord gave me um, the key to David a number of years ago. Now, the key to David opens the door, and the door opens the house. Okay, so there's a House of David scroll, which is in 1 Chronicles 24, 25, 26, and 27. And it shows us how to operate as kings and priests. Okay? That's a real thing. It shows us how to administer as a judge, singers and musicians, um, porters, and the military. Okay? It shows us the order of those things and how heaven operates and how we can cooperate with heaven. All right, we went over that in Great Tillers, like, you know, 20 some odd. Actually, this, this message connects to that, and I'll have that in the title. So that's the key to David. So we can step in, in faith, we can step into the realms of heaven and administrate. Worship God, administrate as a judge, administrate as a porter, open doors, close doors, just like the Lord, okay? So, um, so one place that we... Uh, find in the house of David is the angels are named. They're there. The ones that are in Revelation are in um, First Chronicles or uh, in other places in Scripture. But if we go to Revelation 8, uh, when he had opened the seventh seal, I heard silence in heaven in the space of half an hour. I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. Okay, so we have seven angels given seven trumpets. Well, who is this? Well, we can find out who they are in First Chronicles 20, I think it's 27. Yeah, 20, uh, excuse me, First Chronicles 26. And I'll just read you the names, but they're between verses 20 and 31, okay? Now, if you do uh, some research on it, you'll see that some of the names here are the time of Moses. It takes some study to find the seven, but there are seven. And how it works, guys, is these are the treasury room chief porters. So they receive the offerings from the people, and they put them in the various treasury rooms, and they facilitated the uh, financial aspects of the temple. And we can do the same thing. That's why it's all in the Bible, to show us how to cooperate with heaven. All right? Now, their names are Hagi, Zetham, Joel, Shubel, uh, Shum Shumaliath, uh, Chenaniah, Hashabiah, and Jerijah. Okay, those are the seven. All right? Now, if any of you are interested, I have the House of David scroll in a PDF, and you can see the notes on all um, these gods. For example, their names... This is what their names mean. Brother of Jehovah, Olive, Jehovah is God, Peaceful, Jehovah Establishes, Jehovah Considers, Taught by Jehovah. This is just what their names mean. By. But uh, to show you as well the fact that they are porters, but they are also trumpeters. We find this in 1 Chronicles 15, 23. Um, and these were the doorkeepers to for the ark. Um, and it lists their names. And the priests did blow the trumpet before the ark of God. Obedidim and Jerob were doorkeepers of the ark. So this is here in, in uh, 1 Chronicles 15 gives us the order of these seven. There are seven. Um, and they're even listed here. Okay. So, um, guys, these are the ones that administrate the treasury rooms, but they're also the trumpeters. So in the Feast of Trumpets, they're the ones blowing the trumpets. In the book of Revelation, when you see the trumpets, these are the ones blowing the trumpets, okay? So they have the same role. So here they're given trumpets to blow the trumpets to administrate the Feast of Trumpets service, but their role is the same as in the House of David. They are also chief Porters over the treasury rooms. Okay? 
So that's important for us to understand, right? That this is all in the Bible. But it's here in the pattern of the house of David, the pattern of the temple service, and all that is a pattern of heaven, that through the Lord we are made kings and priests, and we can also administrate. All right? So now let's also look at, obviously the key to this is... Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And uh, to the angel of the church at Philadelphia. Now, you'll notice that every of the seven churches has an angel assigned to them. All right? And those angels are in the Bible. They're in Zechariah. Um, I just want to give you the right chapter. They're in Zechariah chapter 6. And I have another video where it talks about the seven angels. That are over the seven churches. They're named in the Bible, and they also have roles. Okay, so they are uh, judges over the churches. So here we have the angel of the church of Philadelphia. These same things says he that is holy and true. He that has the key of David. Guys, I'm giving you the key of David. I'm telling you how these things work. The key opens the door. The door is in the house. The house of David is. The scroll and all those videos shows you how to administrate as a priest. He that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. All right. So what's happened is the Lord has given us the keys to the kingdom. Right. He's given us the keys and, and you know the keys of the kingdom and you shall bind um, anything in heaven should be bound in earth. So it's not so much that you're binding and loosing but you're opening and closing doors in the spirit, in heaven, in the treasury rooms, okay? So the key is two doors, and the doors are in a house, and the house is the treasury rooms. I hope you're getting this. And I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. So the key was given to the Lord Jesus Christ, and a door was opened to the church of Philadelphia. All right, but he's also given us the keys. We can bind, we can loose, we can open doors. All right, because this isn't magic, but it's real. So you must learn how to administrate, and we're learning. We're learning. This is real. Okay, so we know the Lord Jesus has been given those keys to administrate everything in the realms of heaven that's at our disposal. Um, we must do it though by His will. But God wants us to participate with him, guys. So, the key to David is um, over the treasury rooms, all right? And then we can see the chief porters in Revelation 8 are those porters that are over those treasury rooms. But the key is the Lord Jesus. So, he is quoting there, guys, Isaiah 22. So, now I'm going to connect this all together for you. So, in Isaiah 22... Um, it connects the message of these end times, the message of the Lord talking about people doing their own thing. You will not be able to administrate in the treasure rooms doing your own thing, being selfish, just getting stuff down here. The Lord told us uh, specifically that we are to lose our life. That's the example, right? And watch this, guys. So in uh, ver 22, verse 1, in the burden of the vision of the valley, uh, what ails you that you are wholly gone up to the housetop? So here it's even talking about in Isaiah the housetop. The Lord said, when you go to the housetop, don't look back. Just go. Go. All right. And um, verse 13. Behold, joy and gladness, slaying of oxen, killing of sheep, eating of flesh, drinking of wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Eat, drink, and be merry. Who cares if you die? Blah, blah, blah. No. Guys, this is a critical, critical time. It's not for you to just, you know, be doing your own thing, you know, fat, happy, and lazy. No, you, that's the drunkenness God told us about in these last days, in the days of Noah, in the days of Lot. Drunkenness, cares of this life, weighing you down. Forget it, guys. So watch this. He's going to give us the keys to David. He's going to show us here how to properly administrate in the treasury rooms. And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord of hosts, saying, This iniquity shall not be purged until you die. Because you have to die. You have to uh, be crucified. You have to lay your life. He's saying, lose your life. 
be a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's not even a big deal. It's just, guys, the whole church is apostate. There's hardly any examples of anyone truly living the gospel. It's all a bunch of apostate, selfish believers. Okay? But they're out there. They're dead. So, you can't kill me because I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm crucified in him. You can't take anything from me because I've lost all things. Okay? But watch this. We have two different types, right? Remember in Luke, it said that, the days of Lot. And then it said there were two. There were two types. Grinding in the mill, in the field, in the bed, right? Well, watch this. Thus says the Lord of hosts, get you unto the treasurer. So this is the treasurer to the temple. Even Shebna, which is over the house. It's saying, whatever you hear, whatever you hear, whatever you hewn out a sepulcher, that he hewn out a sepulcher on high and graveth a habitation for himself. That's what we've done, guys. We've been about ourselves, making this nice, comfortable little existence for ourselves. We're really not serving God. We're not. We're doing our own thing. A habitation for himself in a rock. Behold, the Lord will carry you away mighty captivity and surely cover you. Uh, he will surely turn and toss you like a ball into a large country. And there you shall die, and there the chariots of your glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. I will drive you from your station, or your post, and from your state shall pull you down. So this selfish type of treasurer is not administering the kingdom properly, and the Lord is going to dispose of him for someone else. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Elikam, um, and I will clothe him with a robe, and strengthen him with your girdle, and I'll commit the government into his hand. Who is this? Sounds like Yeshua. Sounds like the Lord Jesus Christ, when he, we see him in Revelation 1, he's clothed in white raiment, he has a golden girdle, and the government is on his shoulders. We know that from Isaiah 9, 6. And he shall be the father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to the house of Judah, the key of the house of David. See, there you got it, guys. The key to the house of David. Will I lay upon his shoulder the government of all the universe, of the treasure that is on his shoulder? He shall open, and none shall shut. He shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. So, guys, the Lord Jesus was our example. The nail, when he was crucified in his blood, was our example. The nail is the key to the house of David, to the treasury rooms in, in heaven. You must also be nailed, fastened to a sure place in heaven, in God's throne. But not only that, to take up your cross and follow him. You must be nailed. This is the key, guys. If you will do it, then you can administrate as a priest in the treasury room can do marvelous things for others but you also must be nailed you must follow his example we are crucified in Christ nevertheless we live but guys most of us if we are honest we will say that oh yeah we crucify ourselves we nail us we nail ourselves to the cross back you know 20 years ago but we climb right down and do our own thing and we're living in the flesh we're not living crucified daily lives guys but his blood paid a mighty price but it is the key that nail that he would have that blood on is our example. Okay? Nailed in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne in his father's house. This is the Lord. And he shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. The offspring. We are the offspring. We are the first ones. And issue all the vessels of uh, small quantity for the vessels of the cup. So then. There are cups, there are different things that are in the treasure rooms that we can administrate. But it's real. There's enormous rooms with gold and fruit and storehouses beyond the eye can see in heaven. And we can administrate those. But 
This is the key. The nail. Nail to the cross. You must die. You must lose your life and then you can save it, guys. So that's how the treasure rooms work, guys. I'm telling you the key of the day, but I'm showing you all this stuff. The Lord did this for us, but he did this for us to do his works, to step into the realms of heaven and administrate as a king and a priest. That's what he has done for us, but this is the key, to be nailed, okay? So guys, that is how we connect the trumpeters in Revelation to the chief porters in the house of David. This is all amazing stuff. This is all real. And I will share with you, if any of you are interested, my journey of doing this. I've been doing this for years. Um, I've administrated it in the, in the treasure rooms before. And, you know, I've, you know, someone has a car as a result of that work. So praise God. And uh, many other great blessings. So guys, God bless you. And I, I uh, encourage you to go over these slowly. I speak very quickly to go through a lot of glory and revelation in these messages. So take your time with it. Go through the scriptures. I'll attach in the description field the scroll of the House of David so you can see um, all these different things. All the videos are in a playlist on the House of David um, uh, if, if you guys are interested. So God bless you guys. I love you. And we'll have you uh, some more soon. Okay?